In our podcast today, we're gonna be unpacking one of the roles of the priests, which was to teach the difference between the holy and the profane. And I think you're gonna be encouraged and strengthened as you watch and listen today, and I'm so glad you're tuning in. Wow, these weeks come by so quickly. It seemed like just a couple minutes ago that we recorded that last podcast and it's been a week since it's aired. Unbelievable. And I <laughs> love it. Bro, we are in Leviticus 21, 22, 23, and 24 today. Yes. And that might cause those who are watching or listening to say, ah, I want nothing to do with it. These chapters yeah. are some of the most remarkable chapters in all of scripture because they actually set up the reason why Jesus came and also the reason why he is returning, which is absolutely and completely amazing. So, but I wanna start with chapter 21. And friends, can I just encourage you, grab your Bibles, pull them out, pull out your iPhones, your iPads, follow along in these scriptures because you might think, oh, I'm just gonna listen. The Lord may highlight something to you, just write it down in your Bible, write it, there, there could be some life messages that God wants to speak to you beyond anything that we are saying. And I think we're living in times, bro, where the Lord's highlighting things. Something, something will jump yeah. off the page and, and we've gotta be, we've gotta be very, very perceptive to what the Lord's trying to say. So Absolutely. why don't you just start us off? Yeah, so we're in a, a portion called Imor, uh, which means say or speak. Yep. And it starts with that very first verse, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, and then he begins to give prohibitions, he begins to give instructions for the priests that are gonna be serving the community. Yeah. And this is important because they are the ones that are ministering to the Lord on behalf of the people. Mm -hmm. And so he's giving these, these, these instructions. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> why is that important? Well, again, it tells us about God's heart and his character, something we talked about in the last portion and obviously is referenced in so many of these. Um, and so there could be some things in here that are like, this is just strange. Like for instance, it just talks about not making yourself ceremony, ceremonially unclean for people who die. And he talks about a list of yeah. that. What does it have to do with anything? One thing that I think it's in important and helpful for people as they're reading through the Old Testament, especially the Torah, is this idea of being clean and unclean. Mm -hmm. If we're not careful, because if you don't have a bit of a grounding of what this is all about, you can equate unclean with sinful. Yeah, That's not what it's talking about, That's good, bro. right? With ceremonially being unclean just meant, for instance, it, like in this case, if you had interactions with a dead person because you got a funeral, Right? It's not a sin to go to a funeral, right. but ceremonially you're now unclean because you've been in contact with death. Mm -hmm. And so there's a process of being cleansed again. Why? Because you're gonna to minister to the presence of the Lord. Yeah. So I think it's important that people understand these issues of being clean and unclean are not necessarily, especially when it talks about these things, yeah. talking about right, wrong, sin, and you know righteousness. Yeah. It's about the way you must be prepared in order to minister before the yeah, Lord. Really good. And so there's some prohibitions and some instructions. Yeah, there. really, really good. One word that pops out sometimes as, as I'm reading, it's like, okay, this word is used more than once in this chapter. Yeah. One word that's used oh, numerous times is the word profane mm -hmm. or profaned. Mm -hmm. uh, verse four of Leviticus 21, he shall not defile himself as a relative by marriage among his people and so profane himself. Verse six, they shall be holy to their God and not profane wow. the name of the Lord their God. So I just did a simple definition from yeah. Webster's Dictionary. Yeah. Here's what profane means. To treat something sacred with irreverence or contempt. Amazing. Profane. Yeah. To treat something that's sacred with a measure of irreverence or contempt. That's profanity. That's defiling the name. Wow. You know, you, you shall not uh you shall not profane the name yes. of the Lord your God. Yes. You, you know, there, there's some pretty bad words out there that I would definitely call profanity, but nothing, nothing bothers me more when I hear. Jesus, who died for us when his name is used in uh, because someone 
gets hurt or, or, or gets angry. They throw this holy name and they defile it. And it's interesting, as Jewish people are reading the Torah, they're also reading from the prophets. Mm-hmm. It's called the Haftorah portion, Haftorah portion. And interesting, this week, it's Ezekiel 44. And what does it say in Ezekiel 44, verse 23? Speaking of the Levites, the priests, they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean Amazing. and the clean. So. What is the role of the priests? It's to teach the people the difference between what is holy and what is profane. Because when we defile the name of the Lord, we're no longer mirroring him. We're mirroring the one who wants the name of the Lord defiled. So this, this again, we're, we're just back at this place where God is so... There's nothing not beautiful about him. Right. There's nothing not holy about him. There's nothing, um, uh, nothing defiling about him at all. And we, I'm just struck with, we're called to be a kingdom of priests. Yes. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, right? A holy nation. Yep. This is New Testament too, yes. quoting from the Old Testament. Yes. But now we who've been grafted into the body, we're a royal priesthood. Yes. And if we're not teaching the difference between the holy and the profane, we are not, we are not living as priests yeah. unto God. Yeah, we're not doing our job. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, and that's part of what this is about. God is saying, remember who you are. Yeah. And remember why you hold the position that you hold. Yeah. And Scott, a lot of us need that sober reminder. Yeah. Um, we can just get caught up on getting the kids to school and making sure we get our taxes paid on time <laughs> and getting to soccer practice or whatever. And those things are important. I'm not in any way diminishing their value. Yeah. But here's the point. If we're not careful, we lose sight of why are we here at all? We're here to represent the Lord. We're here to represent him well. Yeah. And especially the role of the priest they are ministering to the Lord, to the people, and they have to reflect him well. And I think it's telling, you see this the very beginning of the portion, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron. Yeah. So the Lord is instructing Moses to speak to Aaron and the priests. We see this happen again. Uh, Verse 16, the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron. Mm. Verse 24, So Moses told this to Aaron and his sons. And over and over, God is giving Moses the directive to speak to Aaron and the priests. Well, why doesn't God just tell Aaron and the priests? Because he loves partnership. He wants us involved. In this case, of course, Moses in a very specific position. But as a kingdom of priests, as people, God wants to instruct us so that we'll help others. Beautiful. That's the whole idea. Beautiful. God loves to share these things because just like he wants to see uh, his name lifted up, he wants us to participate in helping yeah. others work towards that. And so these chapters give us a picture of some of that. If we're hungry for the glory of God, mm. we live with an entirely different set of standards. Uh, and we talked about this last week. It's not the do's or the don'ts. It's the issue of representing yes. the, the, the purest one. I'm, I'm reminded of this verse in the book of Revelation, <laughs> chapter one, uh, verse five. Well, we'll start with verse four. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and uh, from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Now, here it is. To him who loves us and released us from our sins in his own blood. It's like, okay, this is the one who brought us from death into life. Uh, This is from him. He's made us to be a kingdom priests to his God and his Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. 
The issue of us living this way is not for people to say, what a holy man exactly. he is. It's for people to say, what a holy yes. God he is, because it's all for his glory. If we live for the Lord to be, we're, I hate to be so black and white, but we're either glorifying the Lord in our lives or we're glorifying uh, the anti-Lord in our lives. And uh, this, this is costly, this is easy. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just thinking practically, bro. Like, th th there are people who struggle with, with things that are actually pleasurable to participate in. Sure. Naturally speaking. Sure. But those pleasures, what does it say about Moses? Interestingly enough, Moses is the one that's talking to the priest. Moses chose to suffer afflictions with the people of God, Hebrews 11, rather than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin for a season. No wonder God could entrust him yes. to speak because he was not mixing the holy and profane. Wow. He, chose, he chose to suffer with God's people rather than to enjoy wow. the passing pleasures. So we've got this choice before us. What's the key? He was looking to the reward. There it is. That's that's the yeah. issue. Do, do you want do you want to you know latch onto this petty sin mm -hmm. that's pleasurable? Well, you go right ahead and do it. But I'll tell you, you're not looking. You're not looking to the reward. You're looking to your own your own flesh, your yeah. own selfish yeah. desires. Yeah. And people might go, "Oh, that's legalism." Legalism. It's yeah. beautiful. It's holy. Yeah, that's right. It's beautiful and holy. Well, it's a fuller view. I was having. <clears throat> breakfast with someone earlier today and he was talking about you know he's like man i got to a point where i was like i i, I know the lord i'm ready to die I, I mean i'm good and so he said but then there came a point where i realized well are my kids ready <laughs> are they equipped do they know the lord the way i know the lord and he mm -hmm. said and all of a sudden it changed where i don't feel like i'm bulletproof i'm fearless i know god's got me it's like wait a minute I need to be mindful of how it impacts them. Scott, when we get so hyper-focused on ourselves, which is what the enemy wants, yeah. if, if, if we've given our lives to the Lord through the blood of Jesus, then we can't be snatched out of the Lord's hands, Jesus mm -hmm. says. But if the enemy can make us ineffective in our faith, well, then we don't have a positive impact on anybody yeah. else. Yeah. And what the enemy wants to do is get us so enthralled with ourselves mm -hmm. or with our sin or whatever else that now we have no impact yeah. and no fruit. And so as the priest, God's saying, you can't afford that. I can't afford that because we've got to share the truth. I love it. And we see that throughout these scriptures. And so it kind of gives some directions there. It finishes chapter 22, verse 31. Keep my commands and follow them. I am the Lord. Do not profane my holy name. I must be acknowledged as holy by the Israelites. I am the Lord who made you holy and who brought you out of Egypt wow. to be your God. I am the Lord. He's summing this whole thing up saying, this is the issue at hand. It's not about your personal preferences. It's not about what you think is fair or unfair. This is about, I'm the one that rescued you. Yeah. And I want to rescue more. Yeah. And I need you to be in participation Whoa. with me in this. So good. And so I think when we read it with that context, it yeah. helps us understand some of the details. And I think sometimes I understand that people who were born in the 1900s or early uh, 2000s or, or 20, young people, they were not slaves in Egypt. They don't, they don't have the understanding sure. of what it was like to to be like that. Oh, there are some people that are uh, are very much living even in that kind of condition today. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, bro, when you experience firsthand, it's like, okay, I was a slave yes. and now I'm not, I'm serving him. But when it's only the testimony of thousands of years ago, exactly. you know what's so beautiful about um, the Jewish people? They don't say, our fathers were slaves. They say we were slaves. There's this identification with our heritage that I think many, even in the in the in the greater church, might not have. Uh, they, 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 it's it's a Hebraic way of thinking. We remember 
over and over, we just celebrated Passover. We remember what the Lord had done. Yes. We teach our children and our children's children. We were slaves, we were this, we were this. So I think one thing that might, it might be a good exercise for us who might think this is like, oh, I, I'm not really getting it. Yeah. What if we just also, what if we said, Lord, give us the revelation yeah. of what it was like to be slaves yes. in Egypt. But yes. Just give me a dream, give me a sense of what it was like to be rescued yeah. from darkness and slavery and brought into the light. That's why he says, I'm the Lord. And sometimes, you know, you would read, I'm the Lord that brought you out of Egypt. So therefore you owe me something. No, yeah. that's not why God is saying that. He's certainly not bragging. Sure. I'm the Lord that brought you out of Egypt. You, you know, now, now serve me. Yeah. You know, I'm the Lord that brought you out of Egypt. I'm the Lord that gave you life. Yes. I'm the Lord that sustains you. Yes. I'm the Lord that will one day raise you up. Yeah. Therefore, live in such a way. Go ahead, bro. Well, I think it's it's you, you nailed it. I think we need to rehearse our stories. Remember what God did mm -hmm. because it does produce gratitude. Yeah. And in the environment of gratitude, so many good things happen in our spirit. It's why Yeshua said Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, blessed are those who mourn, yeah, for they will be comforted. There's a comfort you will not receive until you actually mourn. Wow. And if you haven't mourned the brokenness and the sin, if you haven't remembered what it was like to be in bondage, mm -hmm. it's hard to feel the full comfort of what he's offered. Yeah. So there's a blessing in going back and remembering, man, there was a time when I was far off. Mm. And regardless of what that means, just being outside of the knowledge of the Lord and the love of God, man, when we mourn that season, the comfort is all the sweeter yeah. that then motivates us and says, man, I want to live for God. He has been that. so good. And he reminds us that through his scriptures. I love that. So just on the heels of that in the last few minutes, it's so interesting. You shall not profane his name. You should keep my commandments. Why? You know, it's the Lord. He desires to live among us. And then in chapter 23, which is a very, very significant chapter for Jewish people everywhere, yeah. God says, the Lord spoke again to, to Moses saying, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, the Lord's appointed times, which you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed times are these. So God's saying, okay, don't profane my name. Right. I want to meet with you. Yes. I want you to make an appointment yes. with me because I'm coming down. At these appointed times, I'm coming down at Passover and first fruits and Shavuot, Pentecost, and the Feast of Trumpets and uh, the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles. And he gives Israel his calendar yes. of significant seasons of when, of when he wants to show up. Amazing. And it's kind of crazy to me to think about it. Each one of these seasons correlate to things that happened in Jesus's life, as well as things that will happen at the end of the age. We've got two or three minutes. Maybe you can just talk briefly about each of these before sure. we close. Well, just quickly, it's, it's significant that God says, these are my appointed times. Yeah. It's not Israel's appointed times. Right. These are God's appointed God's. times. So whether you're Jewish or Gentile, you can glean so much from this, yeah. and I encourage you to do so. And it's very key that he starts with the Sabbath. Mm. It's not an annual festival, it's a weekly appointment, right, right, which is, right. I think is really important, and, and that's that. talked about a lot in the Torah. So you get Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. These happen around at the same time. And uh, of course, this is the retelling. We just talked about, remember your story. Yeah. Well, this is the retelling of the Exodus, right. how the blood was put on, the blood of the Lamb was put on the doorposts and that the death angel passed over. Then from there, uh, it takes us into the Feast of Weeks, right? So Shavuot, first fruits comes right on the heels of unleavened bread, so. Okay, so. Oh, okay. that's true, yeah, because if you think back with, with Yeshua's life, so he is the Passover lamb. It's Passover lamb, he dies. Right, so unleavened bread, he is the bread of heaven who right. has no sin. Right. There's no leaven within him, right? right? Right. He's raised to life on the Feast of First Fruits. First, first Corinthians first fruits. 15 yeah. talks about this. Jesus, firstborn, first fruits of the grave. Right. Right. He's presented before the Lord. Then we get into the Feast of Weeks, so Shavuot. 50 days after Passover, right? Jesus walks with them for 40 days. Then he says, wait in Jerusalem, talks to the disciples. They wait 10 days 
It was on Shavuot, it was on Pentecost that the Spirit of God was poured out. Yeah. In, in the Old Testament, it's to believe that's when the Torah was given right. on Sinai. Right. And when we see that picture, Book of Exodus, we talked about in those portions, 3,000 people died that day yeah. because they didn't honor the Lord, didn't fear the Lord. Yeah. We look in the New Testament, 3,000 people are saved yeah. on that day. Yeah. And it's a, it's a clear picture of God pouring His Spirit out. Then we have the summer. Yeah. Right? Then it gets into the fall feast with the Feast of Trumpets. This is all in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 lays yep. out this entire plan for us. Yep. Uh, feast of Trumpets. I believe is significant as it relates to the return of Christ. Yeah. From obvious reasons. Yeah. Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Yeah. Right? This is when the blood was applied on the mercy seat. This is where you want your name written in the book of life. Right. I think we have some things to look forward to there. And it culminates in the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, where... Everyone comes and celebrates the ingathering, yes. the final harvest. Yeah. Yeah. What could that be about, Scott? Who could even know? But I just think we, it's the celebration of the final harvest, and God is preaching yes. to all of us through His calendar every single year. We do well to pay attention to it yeah. and to try to get in rhythm with God. You know what's amazing, bro? That all nations are going to be streaming to Israel after Jesus returns, yep, Zechariah. sets up his kingdom in the book of Zechariah, and they're gonna be celebrating together mm. the Feast of Tabernacles. Amazing. That means that Israel is still important to God. Absolutely. That means that there's something that God is holding deeply and working towards so that when Israel's enemies say, we wanna see Israel wiped out, we know the end of the story. Yes. Oh, Israel may go through some difficult days ahead yes. and they're going through some difficult days now. But the end of the story, when I was younger, there was a Paul Harvey, guy named Paul Harvey, and he used to go, and now you know the rest of the story. Well, we know the rest of the story. And that's why we want to be on the right side of history, especially in this season. And we need to be people that say, I'm standing with Israel. Yes. I'm not talking about politically. I'm just talking about God's heart. Yes. We stand with Israel. We pray for their salvation. We yes. pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. We believe God to be glorified yes. through his betrothed bride yes. because that wedding ceremony is going to be culminated yes. when he comes back, when yes. Israel looks on him whom they've pierced and they mourn for him and they yes. recognize him and they say, Jesus, come back yeah. to Jerusalem. What? A day that will be yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> amazing. Sir. Thanks, bro, for uh, for helping with oh, man. all of these podcasts. And thank you so much for listening. Listen, please, <laughs> these podcasts are free. Uh, we invest into them. And if you'd like to bless me and bless Nathan, please share them free of charge. You can download our Together for Israel app. All of these are on the app. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Nothing charged, no fees, but on our YouTube channel, we have all of our podcasts as well as different teachings that are on there that will help equip you to carry God's heart for Israel. I love you. I bless you. It means the world to me that you listen and watch. And we'll see you again next week.